This presentation will look at a practical example of the next generation of authentication which will be built around software tokens. Usernames and passwords are typically not easy to use and can be easily crackable. What we need is some other form of authentication which provides easy access to services but provides a high degree of credible authentication. Basically card space gives us two types of cards. We can have a personal card where we can actually keep some details, some login details, uh, basic details of name and address and so on. And we can also have a managed card. It is managed cards that we can use for online purchases and so on. With this we can purchase a card from a, an identity provider which can then be used to verify someone's identity to a reliant party. Details such as contact, credit card details, passwords and so on can be kept off the machine. So basically we can create a personal card or a managed card. The personal card is useful for logging in to systems and can carry personal information with it. A managed cards are encrypted also and can be used to purchase things online. So if we now look at a practical example of card space. So what we'll do is we'll log in with the with normal username and password but in this case what we'll do is we'll, as we'll associate a card with the login so that we don't have to use a username and password anymore. So if we log in through the traditional way it just takes a little minute because we're using a virtual image here and we need to use a virtual image because there is a, a blanking screen that is produced with card space when we access the cards and it should we should be able to view it within inside our virtual image. Hopefully we get a connection eventually. So we'll try our login again. Takes a little minute. Okay, so we should get there now. See some network activity here with inside our, our virtual image. It's obviously quite quite slow. Try again. Now with that we have a network connection. Just takes a little minute. So once we log in, we upload the card onto the site that we want to use. And we can have multiple cards for different types of logins, different types of activities. This site here is a .NET 3 site which should provide us with the new enhancements for .NET, including card space. Just takes a little minute for it to upload, for it to log in. Okay, so we can have our our managed card, and we can also have a personal card, and just wait for it to log in properly. If we go back to our diagram, our managed card is used to actually purchase things and basically what we can do with our personal card is we can use the personal card to actually log in to the site. In this case we've logged into Windows Live, select a card and we can log in. This is known as the Reliant Party and in this case it does not use an identity provider. If we see how we're getting on, still not logged in. 
it would obviously be much quicker than this without the virtual image but we'll go back to the presentation for a managed card basically what happens is that the the client contacts the relying party such as for an e-commerce site the relying party replies back to the user as to what identity provider is is trusted the user will then go to an identity provider get a token which is given to the relying party there is no communication between the identity provider and the relying party okay so we're, we're eventually in this is the latest IIS and we go to the account details it takes a little minute to because we're still in our virtual image go back to that in a little minute so the infrastructure for the future is likely to be built upon this we have an identity selector where we select the identity that we wish to use then our identity provider either provides us with digital certificates using the PKI server or with the new architecture of Kerberos then our reliant party uses open XML standards such as WS star with the WS Meta Framework to pass security information through XML. SAML is one of the new markup languages for security. Unfortunately, we have our network connection isn't good here, so we'll try and, and reconnect. So basically it's equivalent to us going to an airport using a passport at the check-in we get a, a token or a ticket from the check-in which we then show to airline security and this can be seen as the aligned party we can have a federated structure where we can have several checking areas and they issue the same token and as long as those, those check-ins are trusted by airline security then they will accept our token See how we're getting on, and our network connection has failed again, probably due to the the network connection. So now what we can do is that we can actually find the place where we bind our card, and what we'll do is we we will associate our card with our login. This takes a little minute, and click here to bind a card. After this, we'll get a series of cards. So we can choose to send to this relatively untrusted site. So I've created two cards, a red card and a green card. What we'll do is that we'll preview the green card. It normally shows us the history, when it was created and so on. So what we'll do is we'll send the green card We'll try to log in with the red card and it should obviously block us. Okay, so hopefully that should be updated. The slowness is due to the virtual image, which is required to actually view these blocking screens. So we've managed to successfully bind the card. So what we'll do is we'll log out and log back in again the first time we'll use the red card and we should get an unsuccessful and then we'll use the green card and it should be successful after that this takes a little minute so now what we'll do is rather than use usernames and passwords we'll use our card to log in that's fine and now we'll use this card and we'll send it it has the history of it and some ID. Now what should happen is that we shouldn't be able to log in with this card. Okay, so it's unsuccessful. Now what we'll do is we'll use the green card, which should be the one that's that's been used. We can see here the recent card history has been from, from that site. So we'll send it. Now and hopefully we should be able to log in
and we are. So we can see this is a much better way to, to log into a system. We can load our our cards onto a mobile device and use it from a mobile phone and, and so on. So basically what we've seen is that we can create a card, create a personal card with all our details. We can then go to our site. Once we try to log in, it'll ask us which card that we want and then it should hopefully be successful and can load all our basic details. After that, then we can actually see the full the full history of the card.